when you are backed up by power, Hosa, Hosa, pay attention now. There are some prayer requests you will never submit. Because you know yourself, this one I can deal with it, this one. But it pains me because we are in a prayerless generation that wants to walk in power but does not understand what it takes to get power. A generation that runs away from prayer is a generation that will experience movements but not advancements. And God is calling for somebody here under the influence of my voice today. God is calling for you today, today, not tomorrow. And God is saying, come back to the place of prayer. Come back to the place of power. I want to use you, but your capacity is limiting me. Some of you, you don't understand that the more you relax, the more you are causing the prophecies that are on your head to be suspended. Some of you, you have so met your oh God. You have so many prophecies that if only God was to show you and say, when you are not praying, this is what's happening in the spirit. You will never go a day without praying. Are you hearing me, somebody? Papa Kenneth E. Hagen will say to you, even when you don't feel like it, pray. Say, but I, I don't feel it. Say, no, start, start it in the flesh. It will wind up in the spirit. The moment you feel it, you go. Please be seated. Please be seated. Are you hearing me? Some of you, God, right now, as much as you are counting on him, he's also counting on you. Some of you, you carry on your back the destiny of your children. Imagine if Moses' mother did not have the wisdom that she had. We were not going to read about Moses today. So we read about Moses because the mother of Moses decided, I'm not going to let my child die. I'm going to do something. And I know, though there are crocodiles in this river, God shall preserve my child not hearing me and Paul comes and says Timothy when I look at you the faith that is in you did not start with you started with your mother Eunice and from your mother it actually came from her mother Lois imagine walking with God and walking in power that your children starts connecting to your altar God is calling somebody right here there is no time where you wake up in the middle of the night by mistake. There is no time. There is no time where you start feeling like you have to pray because you are just feeling it. No. Right there, it could be angels are, are, are ready to be assigned by you. Closed mouth is equals to closed destinies. That's why I tell you, an attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. Listen, the enemy can play around, but he must never play around your prayer life. I said he can play around, but not on your prayer life. I said he can play around, but not on your prayer life. He who kneels the most stands before anybody. Are you hearing me? If you want to stand tall, be the one who kneels. A praying Christian on his knees can see what a philosopher on top of the tallest tree cannot see. When we pray, don't let the enemy fool you. Every time we pray, there is a shift in the spirit. Every time you open your mouth, I don't care if it's for five minutes. The moment you go, Libarusha, right at that moment, something has happened. Jesus came to them and said, the spirit is willing. Prayer is so important that Jesus being by the right hand of the father, seated on the right hand of the father, you know the Bible says he intercedes.
Because in the spirit, prayer is a protocol. Prayer ushers one into dimensions. You want to be ushered to dimensions. You can't be ushered without prayer. I don't care who lays their hand on you. If you have no prayer life, you are destined to fail. Especially in your walk with God. The enemy does not roll a red carpet and say, you go to church and Apostle Mies is the one preaching to you. Come and take what's yours. It's prayer or nothing. Men like Moses understood it. How did Moses fast 40 days? When he went up the mountain, while least he was in fasting, he was enveloped by the presence of God. That his flesh started responding to the atmosphere that he had given himself unto. Imagine the Lord Jesus himself. He would draw himself and pray. That even after performing a miracle, he will go and pray. The Bible says, and he fed 5,000 men, excluding women and children. And right there, the Bible says, and he said to the disciples, go ahead as I go and pray. I said, Lord Jesus, you have just performed one of the greatest miracles of all times. Are you not supposed to be shaking everybody's hand right now? Telling them how powerful you are is because Jesus offloaded and Jesus had to go and and listen, the disciples never went with him, got in the boat and left. And the Bible says, and he went and he prayed. In the early hours of the morning, they saw what looked like a ghost. That was Jesus walking on the water. Are you hearing me, somebody? I don't have a problem with the Lord walking on water. Are you hearing me? But I have a problem with Jesus catching up with them. Oh, you didn't hear that. They left before him with the boats. He went to pray. He finished praying. But he was able to catch up. As he caught up, they said it must be a ghost. Once you become a praying Christian, even those that went ahead of you will open their eyes and realize you are ahead of them. Don't joke with prayer. Some of you are wondering right now, how come that sister, how come that brother, I was better than them. I was doing one, two, three, and they were there, but how come now they are here? They will wake up and realize that you are not just days ahead. You are a generation ahead. Uh, that was a prophecy. I was talking to somebody right there. They will wake up and realize you are a generation ahead. That no matter what they try to do, they will not catch up. Fasting is an investment, brothers and sisters. Please be seated. It's an investment. And when you withdraw, you withdraw with interests. Are you hearing me? It, you, you don't just deposit and take what you deposited. When you bring out, it comes out with interest. It might just have been one day prayer and fasting. But when you withdraw now, you withdraw it with a scholarship. Are you hearing me, somebody? The devil must never tell you otherwise. It is not too late for you to bounce back. As I am prophesying to myself, I wish I was here to talk to somebody. It is not too late for you to bounce back. Are you hearing me? It might happen. Please be seated. Please be seated. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Please be seated. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. Please be seated. It might have happened that every man you met in your life was the same devil in different bodies and right now you feel like God I rather be alone the devil is a liar if only you can go to prayer and you can go on a fasting with an intention and with an open heart where you go God open my eyes this time I don't want to decide myself this time I don't want to make the decisions myself but this time I summon him in the spirit I call him oh you're not here Please be seated. Listen to this. In, in prayer, in prayer, have you guys heard the summons of the Spirit? You have heard summons of the Spirit, right? It's like when the court summons you, 
whether you are itchy, whether you are happy, whether you are not happy, you are to show up. Why? Because you are summoned by the court. There are types of prayers that when you make them, this is not just a prayer, this is a summon. I am summoning my house. When you are summoned by the court, whether your uncle is not feeling well, you have been summoned. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whether you are late or not, you have been summoned. There is what we call summons of the spirit. Only men and women who walk in power, who understand the importance of the ministry of prayer and fasting, who can summon things in the spirit. You can literally summon your husband. 